Hello students, I hope your preparation for the CAT exam is well on track. Today we are going to learn an important aspect on data sufficiency. But before starting, I hope you know that DI nowadays is coming along with the quantitative section. So I hope students, you are preparing well for the DI, inter, uh, DI or data interpretation section along with the quantitative ability part. This is very, very important because to get a decent or good percentile, you need to crack data interpretation along with the quantitative section. So students, now in DI, we have one of the important part, this is data sufficiency. So we are going to cover data sufficiency with a different approach. Now let us take an overview of the directions before starting with the question. Now students, we have four answer options generally the answer options will be like we can be solving the question or we can get the answer by using either option statement A or statement B but not with the other one. Similarly the second option could be we can use both the options or the statements A and B individually to get the correct answer and similarly we have the third option where we can get the answer the correct answer by using A and B statements but now in this case we have to use both these statements together and the fourth option is generally that the data is insufficient to answer the question. So let us start with the question. So the question goes like there is a game of tossing a coin where there is an entry fee of rupees 10 and the person has to pay additional fee of rupees 1 each time he tosses a coin. The game is considered to have ended normally when the person will get two successive heads. In this case, the game is said to be normally ended. Now in this case, the person will get a hundred rupees game. Similarly, the game can also be terminated by the player prematurely, in which case the person will not get the profit of hundred rupees. Now there is a specific situation where a person Ram has played the game and incurred a loss of rupees 50 by playing this game. Now the question says how many times did he toss the coin? Now students generally in such type of question we solve the question haphazardly without taking a particular approach. Generally it is said that do not use algebra but students I'll suggest in such a question we can use algebra to reach to a concrete solution. So let us observe how we can use algebra to get a correct answer. Now for such a question I hope we know that whenever something comes to your pocket student we say this is an addition to your income while if something goes out of your pocket we say this is subtraction from your income. Now we are going to use this practical approach along with the algebra to solve this question. Now students in this case statement A says the game has ended normally. So which means the person Ram must have got a profit of sorry a profit of 100 rupees. So let us make an equation. Now let us assume the person Ram has tossed n number of coins. So, so students let us assume the Ram the number of coins tossed by Ram is n. So let us make an equation by the practical approach. If the person is giving rupees 10 to start the game, so there is a decrease of 10 rupees from your pocket or income. Similarly, if he is paying rupees 1 for each toss and there are n tosses, so for each of the n tosses, he will be paying 1 into n rupees there will be a, a, a decrease of n rupees plus if there is some profit so that profit will be added to the income now this profit can be 100 rupees if the game is won by the person or this profit can be zero if the person is ending the game abruptly now the net profit received by Ram as given in the question is 50 rupees so there is a loss of 50 rupees that means this can be written as minus 50. Now let us use statement A where it is given that 
the game has been ended normally thus it means that ram has received a profit of 100 rupees so the statement can be very clearly written like this where we can get the value of n as 140 which means ram must have tossed 140 coins to get the game closed normally so this is very clearly sufficient to get the correct answer now similar is the case with statement b it says the total number of tails obtained was 138 now let us divide the total number of tosses into heads and tails now we do not know the number of heads but the number of tails are given to be 138 so can we write the new equation as minus 10 minus the number of coins or number of heads into 1 minus 138 for each of the tail and let us assume the profit in the first case is 0 now students can we observe then in this case the number of heads comes out to be minus 98 so obviously students this will be uh, the student in this case ram cannot win the game or lose the game because negative number of heads is not possible so this situation is not possible now let us take the second case where ram must have got a profit of 100 rupees so in this case we can observe that number of heads comes out to be 2 so we can very well assume that these two heads must have turned up in the end of the game and the game must have ended normally now if the game must have ended normally and he is getting two heads while there are 138 tails so we can say that the number of coins tossed must be 140 which means we can very clearly answer the question that statement b is also sufficient for the question so i, have, I hope student this question is clear with the help of algebra and with some basic practical knowledge now students for more such videos you can log on to hitbullseye.com or you can subscribe to our channel at youtube happy preparation and thank you